You want to share the screen, Raj? Yes. Okay. Okay, I make you the call. So, what do you wish after that? I love now. I love now. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksuran Militanye Na Tasmashri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swamaniti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha sunyavadi paschacha deshatarine Vancha kaupa tarupyascha kripa sindhu payevacha patitanam pavanebhyo vaishnavibhyo namo namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we're reading Sri Ishopanishad, and this evening we're beginning Mantra 18, which is the last. Recording in last. progress. <laughs> Agninae supatai rai ashman, Vishwani deva vayonani vetvan, Yuyo jashma juhuranam eno, Bayo istam tenam uktim videma. Translation O oh my Lord, as powerful as fire, O oh omni ok. Oh Omnipotent One, now I offer you all obeisances, falling on the ground at your feet. O oh my Lord, please lead me on to the right path to reach you. And since you know all that I have done in the past, please free me from the reactions to my past sins, so that there will be no hindrance to my progress. Okay. โอ้องค์พระควานพลังประหนึ่งไฟผู้ทรงเป็นพลังทั้งปวงบัดนี้ข้าขอถวายความเคารพทั้งหมดแด่พระองค์และนอนราบลงบนพื้นแทบพระบาทรูปดอกบัวของพระองค์โอ้องค์พระควานโปรดนำพาข้ามาสู่ขนทางที่ถูกต้องเพื่อให้มาถึงพระองค์เนื่องจากพระองค์ทรงเป็นผู้รู้ทุกสิ่งทุกอย่างที่ข้าได้ทาไว้ในอดีตได้โปรดให้ข้าเป็นอิสระจากผลกรรมแห่งความบาปในอดีตเพื่อจะไม่ได้เป็นอุปสรรคในการในความเจริญก้าวหน้า So we can see the prayer how the 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 person is offering the prayers to the Lord and he's asking the Lord to help him in his progress to a higher situation ตรงนี้เราก็สามารถเห็นได้ว่ามันเป็นเหมือนกับคำปรารถนาที่กำลังพูดอ้อนวอนพระเจ้าให้ช่วยเขาให้สามารถเจริญก้าวหน้าได้ในวิธีที่ And in the prayer, the devotee is humbly offering obeisances, is falling on the ground at the feet of the Lord, so it indicates his humility and his surrender to the Lord. การถวายการที่บอกว่านอนราบลงบนพื้นเพื่อถวายความเคารพเนี่ยตรงนี้บ่งบอกถึงความอ่อนน้อมทำตนของสาวก And he prays to the Lord to guide him so that he will take the right path แล้วก็ขอพรพระองค์ให้ช่วยนำทางเพื่อให้เขาเนี่ยเดินทางไปในวิธีที่ถูกต้อง And the devotee understands the goal, of course, is to reach to the Lord. He wants to have the opportunity to somehow come into the association of the Lord. At the same time, he understands that in the past he must have engaged in many sinful activities, material world. Conditioned souls perform sinful activities. 
เราก็สามารถเข้าใจได้เนี่ยเพราะว่าเป็นสิ่งมีชีวิตซึ่งสิ่งมีชีวิตเนี่ยในอดีตก็จะทําเรื่องราวเอ่อในทําในสิ่งที่เป็นกิจกรรมบาปมากกว่าไหน And these sinful activities are the hindrance to his progress. และกิจกรรมบาปที่เคยทําไว้ในอดีตเนี่ยจะเป็นอุปสรรคในการในการเจริญในการพัฒนาตรงนี้ So he prays that he will be free of these past sins. That by the mercy of the Lord, he can be relieved of the reactions of these sinful activities. ตรงนี้เนี่ยก็เป็นการมันก็ขอปอนว่าถ้าเกิดว่าพระองค์ทรงให้พระเมตตาเนี่ยก็จะสามารถสามารถทําให้เขาเนี่ยข้ามพ้นความบาปเหล่านี้ไปได้ Okay, we'll begin the purport by surrendering to the Lord and praying for His causeless mercy. The devotee can progress on the path of complete self-realization. อธิบายจากการสิโลาบและภาวนาเพื่อพระเมตตาอันหาที่สุดมิได้ขององค์พระควานสาวกสามารถเจริญก้าวหน้าบนหนทางแห่งความรู้แจ้งแห่งตนโดยสมบูรณ์ So two things are required. You, we have to surrender, and we also have to pray to the Lord for His mercy. Two things that are important are one, we have to ask the Lord for His mercy. Two, two things that are important are one, we have to ask the Lord for His mercy. And we understand that mercy is causeless. In other words, we're not really qualified. We have no qualification to receive the mercy. The mercy is the mercy that is the highest that we can receive. Now, continuing the purport, the Lord is addressed as fire because He can burn anything into ashes, including the sins of the surrendered soul. พระองค์ทรงถูกกล่าวว่าเหมือนกับไฟเพราะทรงสามารถเผาทุกสิ่งทุกอย่างให้เป็นจุนรวมทั้งความบาปของดวงวิญญาณที่สิโรลา As described in the previous mantras, the real or ultimate aspect of the absolute is his feature as the personality of Godhead, and his impersonal Brahmajyoti feature is a dazzling covering over his face. ดังที่ได้อธิบายไว้ในบทมนต์ก่อนก่อนมุมมองที่แท้จริงหรือมุมมองสูงสุดของสัจธรรมคือลักษณะในฐานะองค์พระควานลักษณะอันไร้รูปลักษณ์บรมโจตีเป็นเพียงแสงรัศมีที่ปกคลุมพระพักของพระองค์ fruitive activities or the karma kanda path of self realization is the lowest stage in this endeavor กิจกรรมเพื่อผลทางวัตถุหรือวิธีคารมคันดะเพื่อการรู้แจ้งแห่งตนเป็นระดับต่ำสุดในความพยายามเช่นนี้ As soon as such activities even slightly deviate from the regulative principles of the Vedas, they are transformed into v i k a r m a or acts against the interests of the actor. ทันทีที่กิจกรรมเหล่านี้ถูกบิดเบือนแม้เพียงเล็กน้อยจากหลักธรรมพระเวทก็จะเปลี่ยนมาเป็นวิคารมะหรือปฏิบัติตรงกันข้ามกับผลประโยชน์ของผู้ปฏิบัติ Such v i k a r m a is enacted by the illusions by the illusioned living entity simply for sense gratification and thus such activities become hindrances on the path of self realization วิคารมานี้บัญญัติขึ้นมาโดยสิ่งมีชีวิตผู้อยู่ในความหลงเพียงเพื่อต้องการสนองประสาทสัมผัสเช่นนี้กิจกรรมเหล่านี้จึงมาเป็นอุปสรรคบนหนทางแห่งการรู้แจ้งแห่งตน Alright, so we should understand this uh, what's been said here. Uh, Srila Prabhupada is explaining to us how there are different ways of understanding the absolute truth. ตรงนี้เนี่ยศิลปภาพทรงอธิบายว่ามันมีการรู้แจ้งแห่งตนในวิธีที่แตกต่างกันออกไป The ultimate realization of the absolute truth is to know the Lord as a person, or as we would call the personality of Godhead. 
แล้วระดับสูงสุดในการรู้แจ้งสัจธรรมก็คือการรู้ว่าสัจธรรมสูงสุดเนี่ยในลักษณะของว่าพระองค์เนี่ยทรงมีรูปลักษณ์และพระองค์ทรงเป็นบุคลิกภาพสูงสุดแห่งพระเจ้า However there are many people endeavoring transcendentalists they don't know the personal feature of the Lord they're simply attracted by the impersonal feature the dazzling effulgence มีนักชิปนิยมหลายคนเนี่ยที่เขาเนี่ยไม่ให้ความสนใจกับรูปลักษณ์ของพระองค์แต่รูปลักษณ์ของพระกวานแต่ว่าให้ความสนใจในลักษณะของสัจธรรมว่าเป็นอันไร้รูปลักษณ์หรือประมาจติ So those who are on the platform of the Brahma Jyoti they are also transcendentalists they are not they are not on the material platform they've they've transcended the material energy แต่บุคคลที่อยู่ในระดับประมาจตินี้เนี่ยพวกเขาก็ถือว่าเป็นนักทิพนิยมเช่นกัน But they've not understood the full concept of the absolute truth แต่ว่าเขาเนี่ยยังไม่เข้าใจหลักการของสัจธรรมสูงสุด But then there are others who are not even on the level of the impersonalists. They're still on the material platform, and they're also endeavoring for self-realization. แล้วก็มีคนอื่นที่ยังไม่ถึงระดับระดับเป็นนักทิพนิยมด้วยซ้ำก็คืออยู่ในระดับการแบบว่าเริ่มเริ่มพัฒนาตนเองนะตอนแรกแรก So they follow with the path of what is known as the karma kanda. Portion of the Vedas. Karma Kanda activities are activities done according to Vedic reg uh, regulation, which allow us to accumulate pious activities and can bring us to the higher planets. And they can also bring us material opulence. But the problem is that with karma kanda activities, that if there's even a little deviation from the rules of the scriptures and from the Method described in the scriptures: If we deviate a little bit and do something wrong, then it becomes v i k a r m a In other words, it becomes acts against the scriptures. แต่ว่าตรงนี้เนี่ยมีสิ่งที่จะต้องระมัดระวังเป็นอย่างมากเพราะว่าถ้าเกิดว่าได้ทำอะไรผิดพลาดไปนิดนึงหรือว่าบิดเบือนไปนิดนึงเนี่ยมันจะกลายเป็นวิคาร์มาทันทีซึ่งมันจะมันจะเป็นผลผลที่จะได้รับเนี่ยมันจะตรงกันค่ะ There are different kinds of activities. Some people are engaged in karma, which are fruitive activities to enjoy the result of piety and to be elevated materially. ก็มีบางคนบางคนเนี่ยก็จะปฏิบัติตามหลักธรรมตรงนี้เพื่อที่จะเพื่อที่พัฒนาตนเองให้อยู่ในระดับแบบว่าระดับเป็นที่เป็นนักบุญแล้วก็ได้รับผลบุญได้รับความสุขจากผลบุญที่ตนเองกระทำ And other people they're engaged in vikarma which acts against the scripture sinful activities แล้วบางคนเนี่ยก็จะเรียกว่าวิคาร์มาหรือว่าพวกที่อยู่กระทำในสิ่งที่เป็นบาปกิจกรรมบาป And so these v i k a r m a activities, these are acts for sense gratification, and any act of sense gratification will keep us in the material world. แล้วก็วิคาร์มาเนี่ยเป็นกิจกรรมที่ทำไปเพื่อสนองประสาทสัมผัสซึ่งกิจกรรมเหล่านี้เนี่ยจะทำให้เราตกอยู่ในโลกวัตถุนี้ต่อไป It will not help us to become self-realized. มันจะไม่ได้ช่วยเราให้เป็นนักปรุจแจงแห่งตน We, there's examples of this in the scriptures. There's an example of a great king in the Krishna book called Maharaj Nriga. So Maharaj Nriga was giving charity to many brahmanas, and he was giving 
a lot of cows in charity to brahmanas, but by, he made a mistake one day. One day. By mistake, he gave one cow away to a brahmana, which he'd already given to another brahmana. And because the two brahmanas, the two brahmanas were very upset that the same cow had been given to each of them, and so they came to complain to the king. And the king could not satisfy them, and the result was in the next life the king had to suffer for that sinful reaction, and the result was he became a lizard in the well. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very careful when you do karma kanda activities. But if we do devotional service, devotional service is a karma, means there's no karmic reactions by devotional service. Okay, we'll go ahead. Self-realization is possible in the human form of life, but not in other forms. There are 8,400,000 species or forms of life, of which the human form qualified by Brahminical culture presents the only chance to obtain knowledge of transcendence. Brahminical culture includes truthfulness, sense control, forbearance, simplicity, full knowledge, and full faith in God. It is not that one simply becomes proud of his high parentage. Just as being born the son of a big man affords one a chance to become a big man, so being born the son of a brahmana gives one a chance to become a brahmana. But such a birthright is not everything, for one still has to attain the Brahminical qualifications for himself. As soon as one becomes proud of his birth as the son of a Brahmana, and neglects to acquire the qualifications of a real brahmana, he at once becomes degraded and falls from the path of self-realization. 
ทันทีที่มีความภูมิใจกับการที่เกิดมาเป็นบุตรของพราหมณ์และละเลยคุณสมบัติที่จำเป็นในการเป็นพราหมณ์อย่างแท้จริงเขาจะตกลงต่ำและตกลงจากหนทางในการรู้แจ้งแห่งตน Thus his life's mission as a human being is defeated. So s h r i l a Prabhupada is explaining to us the special quality of the human form of life. He says it's only in the human form of life that we have a chance to become self-realized. บอกว่าจากการที่เราได้รับร่างมนุษย์เนี่ยอันนี้เนี่ยเป็นโอกาสที่จะทำให้เราเนี่ยได้รับการรู้แจ้งแห่งตน The animals they don't have the opportunity to become self-realized. เพราะว่าในร่างสัตว์เนี่ยสัตว์จะไม่ได้มีโอกาสที่จะได้พัฒนาตนเองในการรู้แจ้งแห่งตน So in order to become self-realized, one should also acquire the qualities. Of the mode of goodness, which are seen in the qualities of a brahmana. So the brahmana's qualities are described in the 18th chapter of the Bhagavad. The peace, just like peace, peacefulness, self-control. เหมือนกับการที่แบบว่ามีความสงบมีสัจจะควบคุมตนเองได้อดทนมีความ and truthful มีความแบบว่าไม่โกหกมีความสามารถในการอดทนมาควบคุมจิตใจและประสาทสัมผัสได้ and he should have knowledge of the scriptures and he should have faith in God แล้วก็มีรู้ของพระเวทแล้วก็มีความศรัทธาใน So there are nine qualities mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita. So some people think that because their father is a brahmana, they think they are also brahmanas. But we should understand the qualification is not only birth. บางคนคิดว่าเนื่องจากเกิดในครอบครัวพราหมณ์เพราะบิดาเป็นพราหมณ์เนี่ยตัวเองก็กลายเป็นพราหมณ์แต่นั่นไม่ใช่คนจะไม่ได้เป็นพราหมณ์แค่จากการเกิดของเขาเท่านั้น To be born in a Brahmana family can be an advantage to help us to become a Brahmana การที่ได้เกิดในครอบครัวของพราหมณ์เนี่ยอันนั้นแน่ถือว่าเป็นโอกาสเป็นประโยชน์ที่ทําให้เราเนี่ยมันจะทําให้เราง่ายในการที่จะพัฒนาคุณสมบัติของความเป็นพราหมณ์ Just as to become a Uh, to become a, 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 a doctor, it's an advantage if your parents are both doctors. Then you're, you're born into that kind of culture and it, it's much easier to go on to become a doctor because your mother and your father are both doctors. So you would want to follow your parents. แบบคุณพ่อถ้าเกิดว่าเราอย่างหมอแล้วเราได้เกิดในครอบครัวที่เป็นหมอเนี่ยคุณพ่อคุณแม่เป็นหมออยู่แล้วเนี่ยก็จะทําให้ลูกเนี่ยมีโอกาสการเป็นหมอได้มากขึ้น But we should understand to be a brahmana is not simply only birth. We still have to cultivate the qualities of the brahmana. แต่เราจะต้องทําความเข้าใจก่อนว่าการที่จะเป็นบรามณะได้เนี่ยหรือเป็นพราหมณ์เนี่ยไม่ใช่แค่จากการเกิดเท่านั้นแต่ว่าเขาจะต้องพัฒนาคุณสมบัติความเป็นพราหมณ์ In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says that he created the different divisions of society, the Brahman, Kshatriya, the Vaishya, Sudra, and he created these divisions according to according to guna and karma, according to quality and work. แล้วก็ในพระกฤติตาในกฤษณ์บอกเลยว่ากฤษณ์เนี่ยได้แบ่งผู้คนเนี่ยออกเป็นสี่ส่วนด้วยกันก็คือบรามณะกัจเจตริยาวิชาและก็สุตราซึ่งการแบ่งแยกอันนี้เนี่ยเกิดมาจากมาจากกรรมของเขาแล้วก็งานของเขา So Lord Krishna did not create them according to birth but according to how one works and according to one's nature กฤษณ์เนี่ยไม่ได้สร้างเขาขึ้นมาจากการเกิดของเขาอย่างเดียวแต่ว่าแบ่งเขาออกจากการ
So if we think we're a brahmana just because of our birth, that's very wrong. Okay, go ahead. In the Bhagavad Gita, in the sixth chapter, we are assured by the Lord that the yoga brastas, meaning the souls fallen, who fall from the path of self-realization, are given a chance to rectify themselves by taking birth either in the families of good brahmanas or in the families of rich merchants. Such births afford a higher chance for self-realization. If these chances are misused due to illusion, one loses the good opportunity of human life afforded by the Almighty Lord. All right. So, in the Bhagavad Gita 6 chapter, Lord Krishna describes about people who were not perfect in yoga at the end of life. They practiced yoga for some time, but they were not able to perfect it. So and then is the, Lord Krishna describes their destination in the next life, that some of them, they will take birth in the family of rich people, business people, and others will take birth in the family of good brahmanas or even devotees. So the, that kind of birth that gives one a good chance to become a devotee. Okay, we'll go ahead. The regulative principles are such that one who follows them is promoted from the platform of fruit of activities to the platform of transcendental knowledge. After many, many lifetimes of cultivating transcendental knowledge, one becomes perfect when he surrenders unto the Lord. This is the general procedure, but one who surrenders at the very beginning, as recommended in this mantra, at once surpasses all preliminary stages simply by adopting the devotional attitude. <laughs> So Srila Prabhupada is explaining that when we follow the principles of Bhakti Yoga, then we get we come to the transcendental platform. Now usually it takes many lifetimes of cultivating knowledge 
to come to the transcendental platform and to actually surrender to Krishna. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, after many births and deaths, one who is actually in knowledge will surrender to me. So this is what usually happens, but at the same time, it's possible that others can, at the very beginning, they can surrender. And they, they, they simply take the devotional attitude, they have a devotional mood, they surrender themselves to the Lord. And in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that he will take charge of such a, a devotee who surrenders. And when Krishna takes charge of the devotee, then Krishna frees him from all of the sinful reactions. So, especially for materialistic minded people who are doing karmakanda activities, there will be many sinful activities. And if somebody, if someone else is doing jnana kanda, there won't be so many sinful activities. It will be less than the karma kandi. But if somebody is doing bhakti yoga, practically there will be no sinful activities, no sinful reactions. One who is a devotee will develop all the good qualities of the Lord Himself. He will not only have the qualities of a Brahmana, but he will have even the qualities like the Supreme Lord. One who is a devotee, he automatically gets all the qualities of a Brahmana. And immediately becomes qualified to perform sacrifices. He may have been born even in a sinful family. He may even have been born in a family of people who eat dog meat, which is considered a very low birth. But if he chants a holy name and becomes a devotee, he becomes qualified to do Brahminical activities. So this is the power of the Supreme Personality of God. He can make a man who is born in a Brahmana family, he can, the man who is born in a Brahmana family may become degraded like a dog eater. But somebody, somebody may be born in a very low family of dog eaters, but if he becomes a devotee and does devotional service, 
it becomes better than a brahmana. Yeah, the Supreme Lord is in the heart of every living entity and he directs them, he gives guidance. So he will give the guidance to the sincere devotee. If someone's a sincere devotee and they pray to the Lord, the Lord in the heart will guide him to the right path. Even the devotee may not desire, but because he's actually, because he's somehow devoted to the Lord, the Lord will guide him to the right path. We should understand that the Supreme Lord, He gives the sanction to the person, to the devotee. He sanctions their activities. And for, for one who is a devotee, then Krishna in the heart will direct them so that they can never commit the wrong activity. Krishna is very kind. The Lord in the heart is very kind to the devotee who surrenders to him. Even though the devotee may sometimes do something wrong, he may do something against the Vedas, in other words, a vikarma activity. But Krishna will correct that mistake from his heart, from within the heart of the devotee, Krishna will correct it. Because the devotees of the Lord are very dear to the Lord. The Lord is dear to the devotees and the devotees are dear to the Lord. Krishna is in the heart of the devotees and the devotees are in Krishna's heart. So, we see in this prayer, in this mantra, the devotees praying to Krishna to rectify him from the heart. And so we are conditioned souls, so it's easy for us to make mistakes. And to overcome that, overcome the, the sins which we do, then we have to surrender to Krishna. And then Krishna takes charge of the devotee who surrenders. So all the problems are solved just by surrendering to Krishna. Uh, 
And of course, we, we have to act according to Krishna's instructions. So these instructions are given in two ways. One way is coming from the, the saints and the, the scriptures and the spiritual master. And the other way is from Krishna himself, who is within the heart of everyone. So the devotee is always protected when he takes shelter of the Vedic knowledge. But this Vedic knowledge is transcendental. It cannot be understood by any material qualification. If we want to understand the Vedic mantras, we need to get the mercy of the Lord and the spiritual teacher. And if somebody takes the shelter of a spiritual master, then that is a sign that he has the blessings or he has the grace of Krishna. Krishna comes in the form of the spiritual teacher for the devotee. So we said there were three people, there's the spiritual master, there's the Vedic injunctions or the scriptures, and then Krishna himself from within the heart. So these things are all guiding us. So if we follow these instructions from these different authorities, then there's no chance for the devotee to fall into illusion. So the devotee is protected. In every respect, he is sure to reach the supreme destination. And this, this whole process is described also in Srimad Bhagavatam. Right. Hearing and chanting about the Supreme Lord is an act of piety. The Lord wants everyone to hear and chant His glories because He's the well-wisher of everyone. And by doing this hearing and chanting about the Lord, then that way we clean the heart of all the dirty things. 
จากการที่เราฟังแล้วก็สันเสริญเกี่ยวกับพระองค์เนี่ยจะทําให้สิ่งสกปรกที่อยู่ในใจของเราเนี่ยมันลบเลือนไป So in this way, we develop real devotion for the Lord. And this way also we develop the Brahminical qualifications. Means we come to the mode of goodness. And we leave behind the modes of passion and ignorance. We get rid of the modes of passion and ignorance. So in this way, the devotee becomes fully. He gets fully enlightened by devotional service. And in this way, the devotee becomes fully. He gets fully enlightened by devotional service. And then he will come to know the real path of the Lord and the way to reach Him. And when he gets rid of all the doubts, then he will become a pure devotee. So this is the end of this book. This book is described as the knowledge which brings one nearer to the supreme personality of Godhead Krishna. Okay. So, are there any questions? Any of our Chinese devotees have any questions today? Uh, nothing in the chat box, Guru Maharaj. Okay, Vaishnava Bhavani has a question. Oh. Okay. Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisance. All glory to Sri Prabhupada. Uh, thank you for the Asia Upanishad class. This is the first time I'm hearing uh, very nice uh, information. Uh, Guru Maharaj, uh, it's interesting that uh, this is the only book uh, you told on Shruti that's uh, directly the Vedas. Uh, this is the only book. Someone asked me if uh, um, they can know about uh, where is Krishna mentioned as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In the Vedas, and I told them uh, that uh, they can read Isha Upanishad. That's the only Shruti book we have. But uh, even in Isha Upanishad, uh, the it's not uh, explicitly mentioned that uh, Krishna is the, the the supreme personality of Godhead. So I was wondering how to explain uh, these people who ask about uh, uh, this thing. Yes. Yes, Krishna is not specifically mentioned in the Ishopanishad. It just mentions about the Supreme Lord. It doesn't tell us the name of the Supreme Lord. Archana. Yes. เอ่อคําถามของมาจีนะคะมาจีก็ได้แนะนําให้เพื่อนเนี่ยอ่านหนังสืออิชุปนิชัดแต่ว่าในณที่นี้เนี่ยก็ยังไม่ได้มีการแ
มีบุคลิกภาพสูงสุดแห่งพระเจ้าอยู่จริงอะไร So there are statements in the scriptures in other Upanishads. For they mention, for example, there's one Upanishad, one of the Upanishads. There's a verse which says, "Nityo nitya nam chetananas chetana nam eko bahu nam yovidati kaman." The meaning is that amongst all eternals, there is one supreme eternal being. มีสรุปหนึ่งนะคะที่กรุมาได้ท่องไปเมื่อกี้นี้บอกว่าในบรรดาสิ่งมีชีวิตทั้งหมดเนี่ยมีสิ่งมีชีวิตที่เป็นที่เหนือกว่าทุกคนอยู่หนึ่ง And amongst all conscious beings is one supremely conscious being แต่ในบรรดาสิ่งมีสิ่งที่มีนิมิตจิตสำนึกทั้งหมดเนี่ยมีสิ่งหนึ่งที่มีจิตสำนึกที่สูงที่สุด And that one supreme Lord is providing the needs of all others. So there is mention of Lord Krishna, but it's discreet in the Vedas. In other words, it's, it's not made so notice. It's not so easy to pick out Lord Krishna from the Vedas. ก็คือมีการได้พูดถึงบุคลิกผู้ยิ่งใหญ่อยู่แล้วในพระเวทเกี่ยวกับคริชนาแต่ว่าจะไม่ได้บอกอย่างชัดเจนเพราะฉะนั้นการศึกษาพระเวทเนี่ยจะไม่ได้บอกอย่างชัดเจนเกี่ยวกับคริชนา In fact, in the Brahma Samhita, is stated there by Lord Brahma. It is very difficult to know the Supreme Lord from the Vedas, but it's very easy to know him from the devotees. And in Brahma Samhita, เนี่ยพระพรหมก็ทรงบอกไว้แล้วว่าความถ้าจะรู้จักพระองค์เนี่ยจากจากเวจากพระเวทเนี่ยอาจจะเป็นการยากแต่ถ้าเกิดเราจะรู้จักพระองค์จากการวิทยุนเสสารับใช้เนี่ยอันนั้นจะเป็นการง่ายกว่า We have to understand the purpose of the Vedas. The t h e Vedas are mainly dealing with the three modes of material nature, so they don't stress so much about the Supreme Lord. เราจะต้องเข้าใจถึงจุดมุ่งหมายของพระเวทก่อนพระเวทเนี่ยส่วนใหญ่แล้วจะทำงานกับสามระดับแห่งธรรมชาติวัตถุเพราะฉะนั้นความข้อมูลเกี่ยวกับพระกวาสูงสุดเนี่ยจะไม่ค่อยมีบอกไว้ Therefore, in the Bhagavad Gita, you can read Lord Krishna advises Arjuna. He says, "Try Gunya Vishaya Veda, nice try Gunya Bhav Arjuna." He said, "The Vedas deal with the subject matter of the three modes of the material nature. Rise above the modes of nature. Be transcendental to all of this, Arjuna." Then, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, "Go to Arjuna." It's the same way. Do it. 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 โอ้อรจุนะเจ้าจงอยู่เหนือสามระดับแห่งธรรมชาติวัตถุนี้ So it's uh, important to understand the Lord with the help of not just only the Vedas but with the help of Sadhu Shastra and Guru. อาจารย์จึงมีความจำเป็นมากที่เราจะต้องพัฒนาความรู้แห่งของพระกวานแต่ว่าสิ่งนั้นเราอาจจะทำได้ไม่ไม่ใช่แค่จากการศึกษาพระเวทอย่างเดียวแต่ว่าด้วยความช่วยเหลือของกูรูและก็ซาดูนะก็คือพระอาจารย์แล้วก็ตาปราก There are references in different parts of the Vedas. If you go through Prabhupada's purport, you can look, for example, Bhagavad Gita chapter 10, verse number 8, the purport there, and Prabhupada gives a lot of evidence from scriptures, including the Vedas, and you will see. How there are verses there which describe Lord Krishna as the supreme Lord. s i l a p r a p a n d a i a t i b a i wai n a i p a w a k i t a b o t h i s i p s a l o k i p a t a k a l a l o n g p a i a n a n i p r a p a n d a a u p r a w e t a k l a i h a n g n i a m a a n g w a l e w a t i n a i m i b o k w a i b a n g w a k r i s h a n a p e l a n g a m n e r k o n g k o n g k r u s i n g u k y a So Prabhupada, when he's quoting. The Vedas, he will write. He says by Vedic reference, 
And then he will give you a quote from some Upanishad. In other words, it's coming from the Vedas. And so sometimes Prabhupada will quote the Vedas. There are some indications of Krishna there. But the Vedas, as we say, the Vedas are meant for more guiding people in the material world. They deal more with the path of karma kanda. They don't stress devotional service. Vedic knowledge is for guiding people in this material world. The idea is that by the help of the Vedas, they will get economic development, they can have sense gratification, and they can go on and become liberated. So once they become liberated, then they should begin devotional service. Okay. Yes, Guru Maharaj. I understand clearly. Thank you so much. All right. Sri Devi Gorangi has a question. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri La Prabhupada. Guru Maharaj, my question is, does the Lord direct all devotees who are surrendered to him so they can attain the right path? Does the grade of the devotee matter? Thank you, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> Yes, Krishna says, I'm in the hearts of all living entities. So he directs us when we surrender to him. We have to surrender to Krishna and show Krishna that we want to take his guidance, that we want to be guided by him. And the grace of the devotee is even more, the, the devotees are more merciful than Krishna. Lord Krishna rarely awards people devotional service. Because if the Lord gives himself in devotional service, he knows he's going to become purchased by that devotee and he will become obliged to, to, to serve that devotee. We saw how Lord Krishna became the chariot driver for Arjuna. And he had to save Arjuna's life in many different situations during the battle of Kurukshetra. And we see also how Krishna became a messenger on behalf of Maharaj Yudhisthira, bringing a letter to, uh, to Dhritarashtra 
and requesting Dhritarashtra to stop the battle of Kurukshetra. He didn't, that it was not good, that they should, they should settle without having the battle of Kurukshetra, but Dhritarashtra would not agree. Um, Lord Krishna even there was a, there was an attempt to arrest Lord Krishna that uh, this uh, Duryodhan the son of Dhritarashtra he tried to arrest Krishna. And at that time, Lord Krishna had to show his universal form. So Duryodhana couldn't arrest the universal form. So the mercy of Krishna is not so easily achieved. Just like you don't very easily get an honorary degree from university. Honorary degrees are awarded to people without them going to the university, without them studying. The college just calls them and they want to honor them and give them the degree. So that's not very common, very rare that somebody will receive honorary degree. So the mercy of Krishna is also very rare. But the mercy of devotees is that's more common. You can get the mercy of a devotee. So we say by the mercy of the devotee you get the mercy of Krishna. And without the mercy of devotees, it's very difficult to get the mercy of Krishna. All right, is it understood? Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Understood, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. All right, Shaya. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, Tanava Pranam, please accept my humble obeisances, all glory to Sila Bhagavan. Ajana Hawani P. Kho, Pud Pasar Hai, Nya, Man, Man Khai, Ja, Sab Son, Ni, Ni. Man Kawa P. Kho, Tham, Guru Maharaj, Wa, Sasana, Uyun, Ji, Kha, Mi, Pa, Jao, Pen, Seng, Na, Mi, Ni, Mi, Tua, Ton, Na, Ni, Mi, No, Form, Ti, Ni, Man Kawa, P. Kho, Discuss, Wa, Seng, Tong, Na, Na, Kho, Brahman, Man, Kan, Mo, Ti, Ni, P. Kho, Ni, Pen, Kham, Tham, Wa, Tha, Kho, Wa, เอ่อเหมือนคนที่นับถือศาสนาอื่นน่ะเมื่อเค้าทิ้งร่างไปแล้วอ่ะเอ่อเค้าจะไปสวรรค์ของเค้าอ่ะอยู่ตรงไหน
they they live in this world. Uh, where is the place and where will they be? Yes, they will. Get, they will go to the impersonal Brahma Jyoti. They can get impersonal liberation. They can enter into the effulgence of the spiritual sky. They enter into that light. They enter into that place where there is no activity, where there is no variety. Where there is simply the oneness, the feeling of oneness with the Brahman. So there's no activity, there's no relationships with anyone. So they go to that place. Often the followers of Lord Shiva, they go to that place. Sometimes the Buddhists may also go to that place. They don't actually enter into the spiritual world, but they go to the region between the material and the spiritual world. Okay. Okay, thank you, Guru Maharaj, for your question, uh, for your answer, Hare Krishna. Yuvati Sachi Maharaj has a question. Uh, yes, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All Guru Shishila Prabhupada. Uh, should Vaishnavas celebrate Maha Shivaratri? Oh yes, tomorrow is Shivaratri. So, it's mentioned that sometimes the Vaishnavas may celebrate they're not obliged to celebrate, but sometimes they can celebrate if they like to. It's mentioned that Nanda Maharaj, on one occasion, he went with all the different men, the cowherd men from Vrindavan. They all went to one place where there was a temple of Lord Shiva, and they went there to celebrate Shivaratri. So, how to celebrate Shivaratri? Generally, we would speak the glories of Lord Shiva during the Shivaratri. Uh, Lord Shiva is a great Vaishnava and he has many he has many activities in relation to the Supreme Lord. So it's nice to narrate Lord Shiva's different activities, how he gave mercy to all the Vaishnavas, how he was active in the Lord's service. And of, of course, Lord Shiva also has his own sampradaya where the, the, there is a Vaishnava Sampradaya coming from Lord Shiva. Mm. 
and the prominent acharya in that line is called Vishnu Swami. So generally the devotees of Lord Shiva, they don't know that Lord Shiva is a Vaishnava and they think Lord Shiva is himself the Supreme Lord. Of course, the relationship is described in Brahma Samhita that Lord Vishnu is like milk and Lord Shiva is like yogurt. So milk can be made into yogurt, but yogurt can never become milk. So Lord Shiva can become, Lord Vishnu can become Lord Shiva, but Lord Shiva can never become Lord Vishnu. But Lord Shiva does perform many wonderful services. For example, he is Shetrapal Shiva. And as Shetrapal, he is the guardian of the holy dams. Like in Mayapur and in Vrindavan, he is the Shetrapal. And he is the, the guard of the holy dam. And anybody who wants to enter into the dam, they have to first go and get the blessings from Lord Shiva to enter into the holy dam. Mm -hmm. ปัสสิวะเนี่ยมีชื่อหนึ่งว่าเชตรพอนั่นก็หมายความว่าผู้เป็นผู้ดูแลรักษาสถานที่ศักดิ์สิทธิ์เพราะฉะนั้นไม่
But when he drank the poison, his whole throat became blue because of the poison. So he got the name Nilakanta. So because Lord Shiva drank that poison, then it created a lot of heat in his body. So Lord Shiva was given that, that uh, crescent moon ornament which he wears on his head and that keeps his body cool. And Lord Shiva also holds the Ganges water on his head that when the Ganges comes down from the higher planets onto this planet, it comes down on the head of Lord Shiva. Because the force of the water coming from the higher planets was so great, Mother Earth would be knocked out of orbit. But it was arranged that Lord Shiva would take the water of the Ganges on his head first of all. And then it comes down from the head of Lord Shiva. Then it comes down through the Himalayas. And so we would glorify Lord Shiva by remembering all many of these different pastimes of Lord Shiva. I'm only speaking some of them. There's so many more. But it's very nice to glorify Lord Shiva in this way by speaking about his wonderful pastimes. Lord Shiva has two potencies. One is his cheating potency. Just like people who worship Lord Shiva for material desires, they can approach Lord Shiva to fulfill their material desires. But if we want the real mercy of Lord Shiva, we should learn about devotional service. Hare Krishna. So tomorrow you can also meditate on the pastimes of Lord Shiva. All right, and then there's one more question here. So, yes, go ahead. Yes. Uh, Hare Krishna Puru Maharaj, and uh, can we uh, chant Mahabitum Jaya Mantra or Om Namah Shivaya during Shivaratri? No, no, we don't chant Om Namah Shivaya. Uh, uh, oh, Usually yes. we don't chant that. Thank you. No, thank you very much. But we do chant. Sometimes we would chant. There's another version. We, uh, Brahma Bolo Chatur Mukhi Krishna Krishna Hari Hari Mahadevo Pancha Mukhi Rama Rama Hari Hari. <laughs> you right? The Brahma Bolo Chatur Mukhi means the four faces of Lord Brahma are chanting Krishna Krishna Hari Hari. And Mahadevo Panchamukhi, the five faces of Lord Shiva, they're chanting Rama, Rama, Hari, Hari. Lord Shiva has a form with five faces. So his five faces are all chanting Rama, Rama, Hari, Hari. Oh, thank you, Guru Maharaj. 
แต่ในมันยิงก็ทําว่าแล้วเราจะสวดองค์นมัสสิบาได้หรือเปล่านะกุลมาลาบอกว่าเราจะไม่แนะนําให้สวดองค์นมัสสิบาแบบนั้นแต่เราจะมีบาบาจานอยู่นะคะที่เอเขียนโดยพระอาจารย์เราในดิเนี่ยเคยเคยเขียนว่าบรัมมาโบเลจตุมุเคก็คือพระพงศ์เนี่ยเอ่อด้วยสี่พระพักเนี่ยพระพงศ์จะพูดว่าเอ่อคริสนาคริสนาแล้วก็พระศิวะเนี่ยมีห้าพระพักเนี่ยท่านจะบอกว่ารามารามาฮารีฮันสามารถลองเพลงนั้นได้ Yeah, the problem with chanting Om Namo Shivaya is that people then they want they will go on to chant Aham Shivaya, and they think that they become Lord Shiva. Uh, ปัญหาของการสวด Om Namo Shivaya ก็คือหลังจากนั้นเนี่ยผู้คนจะเริ่มสวด Aham Shivaya ก็คือฆ่าเป็นพระศิวะ So that's very wrong, right? แต่ละมันผิดผิดมากมาก All right. There's one more hand up here. This is who is this? This is uh, Yuvati Vishaka. Yes. Yuvati Vishaka Mataji, Hari Krishna. Does she have a question? Uh. Tosi Gopinath. Do you see Gopinath there? Uh, yeah, but we cannot hear her, Guru Maharaj. She is in the translating. Uh, does Yuvati Vishaka have a question? Uh, Yuvati Vishaka Mataji, ni yuventi ma, ni shochulai, ni rugo yuventi, ni ka isi jishua. Or ni ka ika also do you see Gopinath, ni yuventi shisha ma. Uh, I think by mistake, maybe Guru Maharaj. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Guru Maharaj, there is one question in the chat. Okay. Chinese is it written in Chinese? Uh, yes, Chinese. Yes. Hare Krishna. Yes, Radhika. Yeah. Yes, Ma Maharaj, can I translate? Please, yeah. Yes. Yes, obeisances to Guru Maharaj and all the devotees. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. And my question is, Ruja Sampradaya, the follower of Ruja Sampradaya and Shiva, is there any difference between these two? Ruja Sampradaya, um, Ruja, the follower of Ruja Sampradaya, will there also go to Brahma Juti? Uh huh. Archana? Oh. Yes. คำถามนะคะก็คือการปฏิบัติตามรูตรสัมปรดายะเนี่ยคือเหมือนกับเป็นการบูชาพระศิวะไหมแล้วก็พวกที่บูชาผู้ที่ปฏิบัติตามรูตรสัมปรดายะสุดท้ายเขาจะไปที่โลกของบรมโจติไหม No, Rudra Rudra Sampradaya is also the same as Lord Shiva. It's the same as Lord Shiva Sampradaya. It's a Vaishnava Sampradaya. So the, the Vaishnavas, they don't go to the Brahma j o i t i They go to, into the spiritual planets. They don't just enter the impersonalists. They go to the Brahma j o i t i Those who are my the impersonalists or the Brahma g y a n i s they enter into the Brahman. But the devotees, the Vaishnavas, of all the different sampradayas, they enter into the spiritual planets. Because all the sampradayas, including the Rudra sampradaya, they teach that there's one supreme Lord, and the living entities are all the servant of the supreme Lord. อ่าอาจารย์ก็ใช่นะคะก็คือสายของพระศิวะหรือรูตรก็คืออันเดียวกันนั่นเองแต่ว่าเอ่อผู้ที่ปฏิบัติตามรูตรสัมปรดายะเ
So we have finished the, the Ishopanishad today. So on Friday night we'll begin with the nectar of devotion. Nectar of Devotion, very important book. Okay, so thank you all very much for your participation and questions. And we hope everyone has a good night and a good Shivaratri tomorrow. And we pray for your safety and good health. Thank you all very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Jai. Gorbhanta Vrinda Ki. Jai. Jai.